honestly, it's the hallway track. Like the biggest, the spaces where I've learned the most at CPPCon have been in the evenings, hanging out with people over a drink or at dinner and just chatting. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Dury Johnson and I'm a senior software engineer at Medtronic. And at Medtronic, we make medical devices and every product that we develop and release aligns with a guiding mission to alleviate pain, restore health and extend life. So what we work on isn't something like rocket science, but it is in fact brain surgery, so no pressure, you know. <laughs> but we do take this responsibility very seriously. Even if we are not surgeons and we are not medically trained, we do still see it as our responsibility to release safe code out into the world and make sure that we are not endangering any patients and in fact that we are improving a surgery outcome through our technology. But by developing in a high stakes, a highly regulated environment, there is a plethora of necessities, uh, extra steps and some challenges involved as well in that development. We need to make sure our software prototypes are run with clinical trials. We need to make sure that our software not just works, but we have high confidence that any failures are reduced and our code does not fail. We also need to make sure that we get our code right the first time. It takes a really long time to release a update to software in a highly regulated environment. And it's very important that that first release that hits the field and gets into that operating room does not cause any harm. We also need to make sure that there is extensive testing performed. This testing takes months, even years in some cases, for some really high risk features. And we are subject to being audited at any time. <laughs> so we need to make sure that everything is aligned in both the way that we implement our processes and the way that we document them. There are some challenges with this then. You could have the most inspiring idea to how to, on how to simplify brain surgery, but it still might not hit the field for years, so the speed of innovation is significantly delayed. In addition, we need to be very careful with the external dependencies that we introduce into our code base, because if there are any vulnerabilities introduced in additional libraries, it'll take a while for us to deploy a patch, and even us moving at the quickest speed we possibly can is still a while. So we need to make sure our code is safe, and thus we need to keep that list of, of additional software pieces pretty small. We also have a very strict development process. We claim compliance to a lot of different regulations, including IEC 14971 and 62304, which talk about the risk processes and the uh, software development processes for medical devices as well, for software. And as I mentioned, really long development timelines and a lot of documentation involved. Every coder's favorite part, writing things down. <laughs> so we still, as software developers in the medical industry, we still use a lot of typical processes like rubber duck, uh, rubber duck debugging, uh, but our rubber ducks have an additional responsibility, an extra hat, if you will, and we need to be making sure that we are asking ourselves and they are asking us, are we writing safety critical code? And so here I'll finish up here with a few additional questions that we ask ourselves. And we even go as far as including some of these questions in our merge requests as a template to make sure that they're at the top of our mind as frequently as possible. Does my code follow clear and infallible logic? Is it easy to follow? And will my colleagues both within my team and beyond my team understand my code as it is currently written? And even then, will my colleagues understand my code in 10 years? <laughs> Uh, w when working in legacy software, as many of you know, once you write something once, it might not get touched for a really long time. And so it's important that not only will my colleagues understand it with minimal, you know, min minimal additional context, but also will I still remember what I wrote in 10 years, if that's how long it takes for that piece of, for that function to be updated. And ultimately, are all of my key assumptions and context documented? Is it most appropriate for some specifications, some, some tuned parameter to be provided with context as a comment in the code? Maybe, does it better belong in a design specification that is uh, controlled through our quality management process? Maybe, 
uh, there, there's a few options there. Is my code consistent with our documented standards? If we are claiming adherence to the C++ core guidelines, we better be able to prove it. Does my code fail safely and gracefully? Perfect code doesn't exist. If it did, we would love to use it in a surgical context. Uh, but, we, but when our code does run into unexpected defects, then we need it to not interfere with the safety of a patient when they're on the operating table. Is my code defensible? If there is an issue that happens, uh, are there logs and stack traces that we can work through to figure out what exactly happened? In my code changes, did I introduce a new package that then needs to be properly documented and potentially maintained years down the line that could drive an additional release that would take a lot of time? And finally, do my tests cover each path of my code? Do we have high code coverage with our units uh, up to our code itself as well? And this is obviously a hot topic. There's a lot of incredible developers uh, across the medical industry and other safety critical contexts as well that I highly recommend checking out. But I'll leave you with one final question. When you're working in a high stakes environment like this, do you code with your loved ones in mind? Because someday, the life of you or one of your loved ones could be impacted by your code. Thank you.